It's time for Side Schoolers on ScrewAttack.com with me, Stutter and Craig. Hey, Mr. Donut Head Man, who's trying to kill you? I don't know, but you better not. And Daily Destin. This town needs an enema. <laughs> and this week's special guest, Chad. Wow, you're amazing, dude. Thanks. And now, broadcasting from the World Screw Attack headquarters in Dallas, Texas, it's the Side Scrollers. Oh, welcome to Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. What's going on, everybody? Hey, I'm Stephen. I'm Daily Destin. And I'm Chad. Joining you, joining us for the most 30 to what? The, oh <laughs> the most 30? That, you just set a record for the worst intro ever. Everything is thrown off today. Yes, the most entertaining 30 to 45 minutes of your video game week. It is SideTwilters.com. Everything is thrown off today because we are actually not in at the office today. God has tarnished Texas. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's the way uh, we Texans say there's ice and snow outside. Yes, uh, we are not at the uh, the HQ this week. We are actually uh, in the comfort of each other's warm abode. We are now one dumbass. We're actually all at our own house. Well, yeah, that's that's what uh, isn't that what abode means? Your your humble abode. Yeah, you yeah, made it right. sound like we're all in each other's warm places. It just sounded really bad, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Chad. That's good. What's wrong with that, Chad? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Wrong huh? with that you got problems you know being in other what? people's warm abode? No, no, my actually. My place is my heart. I don't know about yours. Anyway, so uh, we got a lot of, <laughs> lot of uh, crazy. It's going to be different this week. We're going to apologize for the audio quality, but we're uh, toughing it out. We're going to do it for you guys because we know you guys like your side cooler. So we're going to, uh, you know, obviously no video this week. We're not even testing it out because the roads are so crazy. Destin actually got in his car and went to the HQ and filmed hard news against my wishes. He went in and still fulfilled his journalistic integrity duties <laughs> just for the G1s. How are the roads, Destin? Awful. That was the <laughs> dumbest thing I've done in a while. Like, just describe, because you are from Wisconsin. Yeah. You, you know what it's like to drive in snow and ice and uh -huh. stuff like that. So what is the difference between, like, up and up north and down here? Because a lot of people hear, oh, you got snow in Texas, the world shuts down. It, it is definitely different down here. It's not snow. It is a layer of ice. It is about a three-inch thick layer of ice on every piece of road. That is what you're <laughs> driving on. And uh, there's no ice, or no, uh, there's ice, there's plenty of ice. There's no salt, there is no sand. You just drive on it till it goes away. It's good. Yeah. Texans aren't ready for this. We don't, this yeah. never happens. So we, there doesn't make sense to have a million salt trucks and sand trucks and all that stuff ready to go at the drop of a hat, especially not in, you know, little old Louisville, Texas. Yeah, they, they do that yeah, on the exactly. bridge, and that's about it. And then, yeah. uh, dude, well, I have my windows open. Yeah. I have my windows open because I've just been watching as, like, the cars try and drive, and they're just, like, sliding along the road. It's pretty funny. Oh, man, I took Bowser out today, and Bowser was fir Bowser's first experience with ice. He's been in snow, but he he, he, he was going <laughs> full bore, and he went after chasing these kids, and he bit it hard because <laughs> his little paws <laughs> didn't know what to didn't know what, didn't know what to think it was, was going on. Anyways. So uh, so the world is ending here in Texas, at least for the next couple days. We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow because uh, the roads haven't been fixed. We're supposed to get hit by another uh, round of, of uh, God Snowy hate. Snowy ice death. Yeah, God yeah, hand? Yeah. No, God <laughs> is hate. that what you said? I said God hate. Oh, I thought you yeah. said God hand. And I was like, we're about to get hit by another God hand. Like, God just what we have now, it's not going to go away. Yeah. Like, it's going to take a while to go away. Well, we're not supposed to get above 30 until Thursday, so... Yeah, which means we're stuck with it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, and, and to make matters worse, this is Super Bowl week here in our uh, here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and everyone is looking at the Dallas Fort Worth area, going, "What is going on down? <laughs> going on down there?" That was me. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just caught. You know, one of the things about doing side schoolers from your house is that you can grab a handful of uh, mini wheat wheat thins or whatever whenever you want, and uh, you know what? They, they don't go down smoothly sometimes. So. You know what my favorite thing about uh, or eat a taco. side scrollers at home is? And move your mic away from Ralph. What's that? You guys don't know if I'm wearing pants or not. Mm, but we can think <laughs> about it, can't we? Oh, yes. Mm. You have hey, no idea what I'm speaking doing. Of, right uh, speaking of no pants, uh, coming up this week, <laughs> we've got a couple VGRs, which I've done pantless. 
Uh, no, actually, Brian did one pantless at the HQ. Uh, he, it's actually a G1 made game uh, on Xbox Live Arcade, which is pretty cool. Uh, called, oh, dude, that was really cool. Yeah, called Return All Robots. Look for that on Thursday. Uh, is it called Pantless? No, oh, Return All Robots. It's called so. Return All Robots. And then we're going to go to the little mainstream on Friday. I got a VGR on Vanna Commando Rearmed Deucer. So, yeah. You're working on a few VGRs right now, aren't you, Craig? Uh, VG yes, I am, actually. We got a BCR2 and a little NVC3. What up? Yeah. For those of you not so proficient in acronyms, some... Bionic Commando Rearms 2 and uh, Marvelous Capcom 3. Oh, yeah, sorry. So... Yeah, so on this ice day, one of us are joyous. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, I know. I've been oh, no, I'm frozen in with MVC3. Oh, you guys Craig, the first thing I said to him when he's like, we're not going in today because, you know, we're all going to die if we try. And uh, After fuck you. Yeah. Was, <laughs> was. He was, he's, uh, the first thing I was just like, oh, it must be nice getting snowed in with Marvel vs. Capcom 3 at your house. <laughs> it's glorious. No, actually, I haven't played, I haven't played that much. Although I, will, I have been, uh, you know, getting used to my combos. I did a little combo combo play last night. and My Hagar is pretty beast. Anyway. See, that you're gonna have such a ridiculous advantage because that's really what, all it is with MVC, man, is we, repetition in the combos, you know? We should just talk about Well, we're not supposed to. No, we can't, yeah, we can't. We can't, we can't talk about it. <laughs> we can't yeah. talk about how awesome it is. You know what we can talk about? Hard what? news. Any, anybody guess? Anybody want to guess? Hard news? Yes. Guess, My guess favorite it. segment, your favorite segment, everybody in the favorite world's favorite segment is time for Hard News. Does he sound like a hardcore robot? Death and the time robot does not approve. <laughs> Hey, speaking of uh, NBC uh, and Hagar, did anybody check the uh, death battle on uh, Hagar versus Zangief? Pretty beast, huh? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. Good to see, good to see Boomstick has met us. Uh, for uh, for those of you who haven't checked it out, make sure you go check it out on our YouTube channel and on uh, Screw Attack as well. All right. So, Dustin, what do we got on this uh, joyous week of hard news? What, what, do we, oh. what do we talk about? Okay, last week was actually uh, pretty slow, but we did have some pretty big announcements. Like, when we did have news, it was big stuff. Um the PSP2 was revealed. It's being called the NGP right now, the next generation portable. This thing is going to be fully stocked. It's going to have a 5-inch organic light emitting display OLED. Yeah. Organic? It's, it's alive? <laughs> yeah. Me it means it's really fucking clear. Like, it's really good. And uh, it has dual analog sticks, cameras in the front and the rear. It has a touchpad on the back, an accelerometer, gyroscope. You know, <laughs> so it's pretty much like a portable Wii. The I thing's a portable you were joking. Wii. Oh god, dude! We need to stop adding shit. It's been like, like there needs. To, it's, it feels like all the companies. It's like they're in like a competition of pimp my portable. Like, yeah. you know, I heard you like this. We threw all this shit on your, you know, your PSP. You forgot okay, the most so, important thing, Dustin. Racing huh. stripes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you so set check it down. This out. It can jump. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> this thing has a kill zone port coming, an uncharted port, Little Big Planet, Call of Duty, Resistance. Like, and they look good. They look almost PS3 quality. Sure, but uh, I guess, are they trying to compete with the 3DS? Is that, I mean, obviously it's a handheld. Yeah, um, I don't know. So, it's a so it's portable the, FPS gaming is yeah, basically it's what the thing is made for. NGP. Its official code name, this is its code name, is the NGP, Next Generation Portable. Oh, also, it has Wi Fi built in, which isn't that new, but it's also going to have 3G built in. So who knows? Maybe you'll need a subscription plan with this thing just to use the Internet. That's so weird. Huh. Okay. Now, I can't say that for sure. I don't know if it's going to be for free, but I, I assume you would have to pay for a service like 3G. Now, I, I don't mean to be Debbie Downer here, but I'm going to be. Isn't Sony a little late to the game with the whole Internet on a handheld thing? I mean, it, well, it, the PS, PSP had it. Sure. Yeah, it had Wi-Fi. Yeah, but yeah. but just think about the things that have changed since the PSP came out. Uh, you, uh -huh. you get, everybody has a smartphone now. The internet is is on everybody. So, if you need the internet, don't you just want to use your phone? You already have a phone that has the internet and such. I mean, it's not for the internet, Craig. It's to like play games online. Ah, Any, you know. Yeah. Okay, I so. see. I see. So, yeah. so the the online capabilities are actually yeah, pretty decent. It's, it sounds like they're building this thing up to be like the portable like online PS3. FPS thing. Portable yeah. PS3, yeah, it's ridiculous. And uh, I actually used some Uncharted B-roll uh, on Hard News yesterday. It looks good. Like it looks like Uncharted One on the PSP2. Hmm. I'm calling it the PSP2. The NGP is just a code name, and I'm gonna have to figure out something new again in a week anyway. So how about Sony's gotcha. next handheld? 
<laughs> yeah. Sounds the good. next generation portable derp. I don't know. The know overpriced. What? Let's just call it that. Because yeah. you know it's going <laughs> to well, be. Well, look, if you want to talk overpriced, let's talk 3DS. But, uh, you know. $250? 250 it, Well, that's not bad. Two, well, look. 250 I mean, it's a handheld. At the end, it, Look, I'm going to buy it. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. The, the uh -huh. games, for me, are more up, you know, I'm more down with uh, Zeldas and Marios and such like that. Uh, more platforming type games. I, I love that type of stuff. So, you know, I enjoy that stuff. And the PSP2, NGP, Sony's next handheld, whatever you want to call it, it, I don't know. It doesn't really get me very excited. Craig, the DS launched at like two hundred dollars. Yeah, no, I, and this thing outperforms the Wii, and the Wii retailed at two fifty. No, I, I realize that. I realize that, but it's you know, once again, I think that a very small, very small number of the population. I think we touched on this last week. I play my handheld when I'm on the crapper. Do I do I yeah. really want a two hundred fifty dollar console for something like that when I'm taking a deuce? Yeah, Dude, but it's bought in three D. Actually, this is a good time to transition <laughs> to the next story All right. about your poop. The story's not about your poop. Oh. The three DS is selling out like crazy in Europe. This is another story from this week. Uh, retailers are telling Nintendo that they're getting so many pre orders they're worried about short supplies. Well, so they're yeah, telling yeah. so Nintendo's ramping up their manufacturing to uh, make sure there's uh, no shortages at any of these stores. Oh, man. No, you know what Nintendo's going to do. They're saying they're ramping up their... Yeah. their but mm -hmm. you know there's going to be short supply. It's the and, Wii all over again. Exactly. It's going to be a year, two years, before everybody who wants one actually can have one, and it'll create this this incredible just why, craze. Why would they purposefully make it impossible for you to get one? Be, why do they do it with the Wii? Because it gets they people They didn't do it with the Wii, it. dude. They were cranking up the Wii so like as fast as they could and people were just buying it so fast yeah but you can't I, tell me i that. remember i i remember i go into kmart and be like just out of curiosity you guys getting your weed yeah we got 20 this morning they're gone yeah, yeah no i hear you, you but know. at the same time you can't tell me that they can't produce enough weeks over the course of a year to to they, fulfill something that at, at, during christmas time you know they I, sold 10 million weeds no i <laughs> i get that no no they, they that's not a joke. The total number no, of Wii's not... right now is like 33 million Wii's. I, I yeah. know. They, they've sold a ton of Wii's. But the whole idea of, you know, you want your, your, your product to be in demand, you know, and mm -hmm. that's exactly what they're going to do with the 3DS. Yeah, they're cranking it up, but I guarantee there's going to be a shortage, and that's going to cause mass, mass hysteria, and people are going to go, oh, my God, I need a 3DS. And they go, so oh, that when they this. see it, they buy it because, exactly. oh, my God, I can actually get one, you know, exactly. and so – you know, I'm still not sold on it because I don't know about the, the launch hardware or, or software. You know, uh, there's no big game yet on launch day that I'm going to want to buy. I'm interested to try out Street Fighter, but do I want to buy that for my DS Day 1? No, not so much. I've, I've mentioned this several times, several times before in the past. And one of the biggest things I think Nintendo has going for it with the DS and the 3DS and all their handhelds and such is that parents don't like the sleek black PSP and the NGP, you know, yeah. they don't like that. They like something they can hand to their kids that's really kid friendly, that has casual games. So the, they get the blue 3DS. Parents, <laughs> parents buy, parents buy the 3DS and the DS to babysit their kids. Yeah. When they're in the back seat of the car, you know, oh. when they're driving around, they don't have to listen to the kid go, "Are we there yet? What's that? And actually have yeah. a conversation with the kids. They're just there to to, to be a placeholder. Babysitter. Yep. Yeah. All right. What else, Justin? Okay, I actually have two more. This one's kind of still going on Nintendo. Uh, how do you guys feel about uh, the announcement of that new Kirby? It's an old-style Kirby, uh, classic Kirby action, and uh, Kirby eating people with his mouth. It's no. not Kirby's Epic Yarn 2 or anything. It's just a normal Kirby. It was revealed along with uh, Rhythm Heaven and a new Pokemon DS title. Cool. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I saw this, and... From what I understand, people are saying, I know Ben was like, this looks like the game that they've been developing out for the GameCube a long time ago. It's like the mm -hmm. same type of game. I didn't know that they're, they're developing out a Kirby game for the GameCube, so this is new to me. I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I I liked Epic Yarn. I yeah. didn't like that it was like, you know, you couldn't die. Yeah. But if uh, I'm a fan of the Kirby series, it's cool. I, I dig the morphing and the transformation and the sucking people in and such. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I enjoy that stuff. So, you know, I don't think I'll buy it, but I think I'll definitely play it and probably enjoy it. You know what's strange for me? They're just kind of like, oh, yeah, we got Kirby. You know, yeah. at E3, they reveal like 10 games. And then all of a sudden in January 2011, they're like, oh, yeah, I knew Kirby. 
Well, it is just. Yeah. Did you they know. were they talking to their? It's probably because uh, they just did epic yarn, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, Kirby is hot. Yeah, he's so hot right now. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Like uh, a lot of people, yes, they're hyped for this new Kirby game, but Nintendo seems to be just treating it as an offhanded comment. You know, you well, know? were they talking to like their investors and such in Japan? Because that's kind of what I've got out of it is that they were. It was either them or Sony or Microsoft. I don't know. They, they sit down with their investors and they say, "This is what we have on the way," and they'll show off like a 30 second teaser like they just did you know it, it wasn't meant for the general public but the general public generally gets a hold of it yeah it was shown at an earnings briefing so there you go perfect yeah. exactly so okay and I, I, I'll, I'll play it for sure. earnings briefing this will make us money right. yeah agreed agreed next yeah and uh well this story's from yesterday so i guess that's it let's go with that that was a good solid news briefing Thanks. yeah for good, the week and you job. didn't have to drive through the ice yeah. All right. <laughs> there you go. That is uh, hard news for this week. Um, good job, Dustin. All right. Thank you. Middle segment. We literally have no middle segment planned this week because things were so crazy out of whack. So do you guys have any suggestions? You want to fire anything out real quick? I was going to say we could talk about our teams for MBC3. Like, who do you think you're going to end up picking? Yeah, but the, the problem is it? I can't tell people why. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you. What. Let's just do that real quick. Let's talk about who our teams will most likely be without going into detail because the reason why we're not allowed to say anything for those of you who don't understand what is what's going on is companies will sometimes send us games or builds of games with the idea of having our coverage ready to go the day the game is released part of that is though they don't want spoilers to get out like right now you're seeing special things around the internet things that are getting leaked they don't want that they want things to all be released at the exact same time so everything is flooded at one time so yeah. There's a thing called an embargo. Our embargo is the 14th, the day before NBC3 comes out. So that's when you'll see all of our coverage. So anyways, let's kind of talk about, though, as opposed to talking about the game, let's talk about our characters. Yeah, on the 14th, we'll tell you to buy it. And until then, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> look, look, we played the game for four hours last night. I think everybody yeah. agrees that the game's wicked fun. So yeah, we'll so. leave it at that. We'll go into why on the 14th. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, Chad, go. <laughs> all right. Um... I was really surprised. I, I like Trish. I picked her because no one had yet. Like, we were going through picking a bunch of the uh, characters. And so I picked Trish. I really like her. Uh, Dormaru or Dormammu or whatever the hell, however the hell you say his name. Um, he, he will be the Magneto of this game. You, you'll see a lot of him. And he's awesome. So I'll be rocking him most likely. And then uh, my third one, I haven't locked down yet. I keep playing around with a bunch of different people. I like uh, I liked Deadpool. I like X-23. Sentinel is retardedly good but it, i just i feel bad playing sentinel because it's so ridiculous mm -hmm. but uh yeah Wait, you're so, playing with dormammu yes yeah exactly exactly i am oh All i right. don't want to use both of them because then that's just <laughs> it's cheating horribly right. me uh justin you can go okay you guys saw that i like sentinel right yeah, yeah. okay so Sentinel's gonna be my first one and then i used uh oh, dante what, what are you eating a taco <laughs> All right, eating on the air. Got it. All right. I didn't expect you to call my name so quick. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, uh, Sentinel, he's probably going to be my first. And then uh, Dante for my middle and uh, Ryu. Now, Ryu might get swapped out for somebody later. I was actually watching those Dormammu videos online, and uh, Seth showed uh, what his charge-ups do, Chad. Oh, yeah? He did back in June. And uh, he has some very cool combos that you can do. So I'm interested in him, kind of. Uh, so Ryu might get swapped out for him. But right now, I'm loving the that combo. Like, it's really good, and I know how to use the characters. So I'll definitely need to go check that out and then try it later on tonight. You bastard. <laughs> uh -huh. You bastard. Uh, my three characters, at least uh, who I've been playing with the most, I've been playing with Hagar because he's super fun. And uh, I learned some uh, other stuff once you pop him up and such. Uh, I will probably... Uh, Tron Bond... Well, I can't really... I will not be playing as Tron Bond, um, who was one of my leads in uh, MVC2. Yeah. And um, probably Dormammu, because I learned I watched Chad play with him last night and learned how easy it can be to... Whatever. Uh, who, else, who else started I play as last night, guys? Oh, Chun-Li. Chun-Li. Everybody. Yeah, Chun-Li. Yeah, Chun so there you go. Okay, there's MVC3 talk without, without getting in trouble. MVC3 talk. Hey, hey guys, that, that Dormammu, though? Go check out the Seth Killian footage that GT did back in uh, June or whatever. And uh, I probably shouldn't have told you that because now <laughs> yep. it's going to be a beating. So. Yep. 
It's gonna be good. All right. Yeah. So there you go. That is MVC3 talk without getting in trouble with MVC3. MVC3. <laughs> uh, there you go. All right. So um, nice job. Way to, way to not get us in trouble, everybody. Uh, right now, it's time for the side scroll news desk. Hit the music. See, once you told me it's my job, I'm on it. It's your job. <laughs> like... All right. Let's go to uh, Miami, Florida, where um, where the world is is a different place than it was 10 years ago after 9 11 things changed right guys yeah yeah people are pretty uh pretty on the, on their toes now especially here in the states yeah that's definitely true yeah uh you know you, you can't wear your shoes through security things such like that anyways uh down in miami where there's a uh dustin is that you eating still the hell is no that? I'm, I'm throwing something away uh, okay <laughs> uh down in miami uh they're also they're very much on their on their uh on their heels, so much so that even smelling something weird will uh, will send out the bomb squad. Now, well, Craig, yeah. you know what they say? No. He who smelt it dealt it. But oh, maybe they should God. start their investigation oh. there. Well, the, oh. bomb, the bomb squad would be the one who dealt it then, which I hopefully that is not the case. The bomb uh, squad smelt it. Well, the bomb squad was there. Well. Anyways, so this is what happened. Uh, Miami-Dade police evacuated. I'm fired, aren't I? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> You're out. Uh, after they, they evacuated this uh, shopping center, after a suspicious package turned out to be, uh, they evacuated it because it was really smelly. Sounds and like they, a plot to a porn. I don't know. <laughs> they, uh, it turned out to be a box full of chicken and goat parts. Oh. Ew. Yeah, which is delicious. Lay, lay, laid out in the sun in the Miami heat and just blistering away. Anyway, so uh, they sent out a bomb detection robot to figure out what was going on to potentially detonate the explosive device, but obviously nothing happened uh, yeah. when they probably should have sent out the bomb sniffing dogs instead. Um, and yeah. then some guy why ran out. There... He's like, what are you doing with my chicken parts? Yeah, this is like, why was there a box of like goat and chicken parts just laying out? It is unclear who left <laughs> the smelly package at the bank and why. So there you go. You know what? Anyways. That's it. That's another overdraft fee. You know what? I'm throwing chicken and goat parts at them. I'm Son just gonna leave it out there, and then after a while, they're gonna start smelling it and not know, and then they're gonna wonder why the hell is it there, and they'll never know. That that actually does make sense a little bit. <laughs> there you just... go. I made sense of it for everyone. Sadly. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> next, let's go to New York, Long Island, New York, where uh, gentlemen. What would you do if somebody just plopped something in your yard that you didn't want, but you couldn't move it? Like, I don't know, a cell tower. <laughs> Set it on fire. <laughs> what? So a Long Island family has one big problem. It's about three, uh, three stories high. It's a giant cell phone tower that was erected right in their front lawn. Now, it's, uh, it's obviously an eyesore, and it's killing their property value. Now, the thing is, uh, the company that put it up was a company apparently called Next G, right? Next G Networks. They put up the tower, and they said that it was supposed to be an extra light that the town required. So they so they lied to the people <laughs> when they put this up. The company's trying to take advantage of uh, uh, of these folks, and um, they're calling it a construction ambush. They just showed up one morning and worked for a week putting it in uh, when they didn't have the necessary town permits or plans or bonds or anything to put up the cell phone tower. Now, um, when asked about it next g was sent a uh, letter demanding answers and Lori DiMarco said she spoke with the company and the, and couldn't believe their reasoning now this is total bs but listen to this they said fcc the fcc the federal communication commission whatever it's called granted <laughs> yeah. them the right to do so and provide a communication service as it was a, pu a public necessity what? How would you guys feel? Chad, you just got a house. How would you feel if somebody decided to plop a cell phone tower right in, their, right in your front yard? Dude, screw that. <laughs> like, I would be talking to everyone to get that shit removed. Or something bad might befall it because it would just happen to be on my property. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, why would you, wouldn't you just go out there with an axe or something? Or, you know, just. I would decorate it like a Christmas tree. <laughs> God. Yeah, I'll, decorate it like Christmas. I mean, it's on your it's on your lawn. I mean, it's technically your property, right? They, if they didn't have the permits and they didn't have anything like that, I don't know what I do. I do something to it. I, I would probably uh, chop it down like a cherry tree, like good old. I don't uh, think you Joe can. Chubby. I think those towers are pretty huge. Well, it's three stories high, sure. But yeah. You just gotta make sure it tips down in the uh, street. <laughs> I'm just well, saying. if you if you're in a place like Chad's, though, you know, how would you do that? So it hits a car or two, whatever. It's their fault. <laughs> 
God. Anyway. All right. So and the neighboring uh, the cops, houses. The cops show up. Did you see anything? No. Nope. What? No. Maybe they think... fucking built it there. Yeah. yeah. I think what would happen is something would just keep going wrong with it. Electrical or something would just keep getting cut. And then I would just keep being like, well, who knows? Something happened. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, there's New York. Now let's go to Fletcher, North Carolina. Now, good old I, Fletcher. I don't. I'm, I'm not much of a church guy. Like I don't go to church very often, and you know my wife wants us to and such. But I, I, I don't feel like I need to go to church very often. But these people take their church very, very seriously. When uh, a church in Western, Car- uh, Western North Carolina turned from angry words to fist fights over a dispute over leadership at the church. Oh, really? Yes. About 30 police officers from five agencies were called to break up fights Sunday at Greater New Zion (laughs) Baptist Church in in Fletcher, about 94 miles west of Charlotte. Now, um, there were 75 people brawling when the cops showed up. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) They were uh, divided over the recent ouster of, uh, or ousting of Reverend Lavania Ray as the pastor of the church when uh, the fighting broke out on whether they should uh, reinstate him or not over a vote. I, I don't know. Lord, I was about to ask, did somebody bring up evolution or something? But <laughs> damn. Well, Why I... fight? In the end, Jesus wins. <laughs> <laughs> no, they must oh, fight man. to see who Jesus favors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, like I said, I'm, I'm not much of a church guy. I, you know, I, I, I go when I feel necessary, but at the end of the day, I know I'm a good person, and I know everybody has their own religious thoughts, and I'm not one to force mine on anybody, and I don't want them forcing theirs on mine. But doesn't it seem like there's just fist fights always breaking out in churches somewhere? Like, especially in the South. Like, the South, you know, North Carolina is considered the South still, even though it is North Carolina. I don't know. Is it just me? What's the question? <laughs> Doesn't it seem like there's like a fist fights always breaking out in churches and stuff like that over, over stuff like this? I have I, never. Heard I of can't. This <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, I can't say I've heard of a lot of fist fights happening in churches, dude. Right. Well, I guess I'm the only one who. <laughs> Do you guys hear fighting? Oh, it's Sunday again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like... Apparently, it is just me who uh, who sees this stuff. All right. Well. <laughs> Put a big F me. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> the complete opposite of church. It's like, then you'll get churches speaking out against church. Be like, those are the places where people go to fight. Stay away. Well, they, they, didn't, have, they didn't have an illegal fight club. Right the first now. rule of church is you, you don't, don't talk, talk about, about church. church. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I know two guys who are going to hell. <laughs> all right. There you go. That is uh, the side school news desk for this week. All right. Uh, First little church club. Uh, <laughs> you don't talk about church. <laughs> Can, can't, you, can't you just see like Brad Pitt showing up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Been beating the shit out of. Never mind. <laughs> For us in craps time, we'll be making soap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Four questions. Chad, we got a bunch. Let's see this fire away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guitar Zan asks. What happened to the top 10 online slash offline multiplayer PC games? Is it still happening or did it fall through the cracks? No, no, it's, it's totally going to happen. We said, we said we're going to save it up for another list and we mean we're going to save it for another list. Uh, I know our next top 10 list, we realized we're going back and hitting, hitting something we didn't, uh, we never finished, which was the top 10 best robot masters in Mega Man. We're going to hit that up next. Um, I think that needs to be done. We did top 10 worst and uh, so we definitely got to hit best. But yeah, we'll, we'll totally hit PC. We said we're going to hit PC. And uh, we'll definitely hit PC sometime. Just yeah, it's now. just if we think of something better, we do it first. Yeah, exactly. And then because PC will be difficult. <laughs> yes, also that. <laughs> what? I think I think it's gonna take some time to do that one too. So that it'll it'll probably be a little bit because even when we decide we're gonna start doing it, yeah, we're there'll probably be other top tens that we're working on while we're still working on that. Yeah. For, the capture well, and stuff. Honestly, I think the main reason we haven't done PC sooner is just because we're a Mac shop. You know? Yeah, uh, we work on Max, Final Cut, all that stuff. So, yeah, it's it's tough to do something on PC games when you don't when you have one PC at your office, which effectively runs your merchandise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's an e-machine, so please bear with that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, what else, Chad? Uh, ass rap. Oh no. Nice. Uh, this is to Craig. Yes, ass rap. <laughs> Do you plan slash expect Screw Attack to continue after the crew, uh, after the current crew, or do you expect Screw Attack to shut down after you guys leave? Which you know, hopefully that's never actually, happen. That's actually a really good question, and it's something that 
Um, I, I wonder if the G1s have thought about it like that because the current, you know, I, I assume when he, when he says like the current crew, when he thinks like probably, uh, specific, probably like Ben and Nick and probably Jose, because you guys are, you guys are a little older. You guys can, you know, they're still in college. And I assume that's kind of what he's talking about. No, absolutely. I think he means like when we're, when like, when we're all done, like when, like, whether we get old or like screw attack retire, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Like, well, I was thinking more immediately, but uh, <laughs> we can answer both. But yeah. like when they finish school. Yeah, well, I, I think when they finish school, it, it's really up to them if they want to stick around and stay. I mean, you know, obviously, once you're a part of the family, you're always part of the family. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would like to think screw attack is always going to continue in some way, shape or form, you know, whether whether I'm a part of it or not. You know, maybe I'm 85 years old and I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I when I what came out for the laser grid. Yeah, I was going to say back I, in I, my I, day. You know? I gotta be honest, you know, I, I may not want to be talking video games when I'm 85 years old. So, you know, I, it's, uh, we'll see what happens, but I, I'd like to think that Screw Attack will continue in one sh one way, shape, or form. So. Oh, Ben graduated? Just, let's just quit. All right, every, everybody, <laughs> We're done. Uh, Dustin, uh, it's time to go back to Green Bay. Sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah. Ben, ben, ben graduated, Nick graduated. Get out of Texas. <laughs> not that you don't work here anymore. It's get out of Texas. Out. Yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, um no. <laughs> flight of eternity asks how do people react when you tell them that you work at screw attack do they find being part of the world of video game journalism an interesting job hmm. um i guess i'll call it i'll, I'll start with that you want to call uh, it journalism? there's there's uh there's there's two two reactions first there's the initial reaction when you just tell them the name and everyone automatically assumes porn because our official title is screw attack entertainment llc because we're all dead sexy Oh, that too. I mean, it does help when you, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but uh, so they immediately think porn. So there's that kind of awkward phase. And I like, in the very beginning, it was kind of awkward. I'm like, it's not what you think. But now I'm just like, it's not porn. You know, like, I don't even care anymore. But then uh, you should you should have been there when I was first setting up the business, because <laughs> when I'm calling the state of Texas and telling them that, you know, I'm, I'm registering this this business called Screw Attack Entertainment. And they say, what type of business? And I say a website and they say, oh, what do you do? And I say video. And, you know, uh, you're not even thinking, and they're like, "What kind of video?" Yeah, exactly. You know, they're thinking they're gonna have to give me like some sort of porno license. But can I get a free subscription out of this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but, uh, continue. Yes. Yeah, and then, uh, but then after that, then it's like, if people actually, you know, then you're like, it's a video game website or whatever, and I'll get like two reactions. Like some people are like, "Dude, that's really awesome," you know. But then other people, there's kind of the just like, oh. You don't really work for your living, you know, like oh, that's, yeah. and I, and I hate that because it's Absolutely. like, like I, I know that we have such a cool job, you know, I'm so thankful for it, you know, but like we still do put in a lot of work. Oh no. You, you don't think that people don't look at us and they go, how many times have people said this to you when you go, Oh, I work for a video game website or I work in video games. They go, Oh, so you play video games all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. probably the number one thing that, that you're, Oh yeah. Oh, that's exactly. Yeah. I play video games all day. That's exactly what I do. So yeah. Yeah. So, Anyways. Anybody else? Who did I cover it? Destin, you, you want to chime in? Well, actually, I told somebody this summer, like, they're like, so what have you? What are you doing down in Texas? It's like, oh, I review video games for a living. And he just got done talking about how much he likes his job and everything. <laughs> and, after, <laughs> and after I told him what I did, he got really quiet and left. <laughs> Damn. I felt horrible. I was like, it's... You like what you do. Who cares what I do? You know. Yeah. Damn, so. you, you win again, Destin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someday. <laughs> All right, what else, Chad? We need to fly. Let's see. Next up, stuttering Craig fan number a lot of numbers again. Uh, if money depended on it, who at the ScrewTech HQ could last the longest without playing video games? Now, he Me? brought in. Wait, it wasn't what? just. Now keep in mind, it wasn't just who would last the longest without playing video games. We've brought money into this equation. Exactly. So, so, who would not play video games here's, the longest okay. if there was a good profit in it? Here's my problem. I would forget. And I would probably just, you know, I'd be walking by. And especially at the office where you have all these games readily avail available to you, you know. Uh, I would probably just, you know, press. I think you and I would do this, Chad. You and I would probably just <laughs> hop in and play a game of Third Strike or something without even thinking about it. And as soon as we hit the start button, we'd go, oh. Well, it, it depends on how much money we're talking about. Because right. if this was like a million dollars, you know, I would be 
fucking on my game. That would be my game. It would be to not play video games and win a million dollars and then buy whatever the fuck video games I want. Yeah. See, but the thing about that is, like, you know, it feels like a million dollars as well. I, I'd really be honed in and that's all I'd be thinking about all day, right? And upon doing so, you know, we'd end up 25 years from now be <laughs> you know, wait, waiting to be paid this million dollars and waiting for someone to mess up. But so who dies last? And ultimately, Screw Attack would, would fail because we wouldn't know what we're talking about anymore. Or we yeah. just, just have to go through, like, the trailers online and such. <laughs> Anyways, Destin, could you think you could hold up? Yeah, pretty easily. Like I watch a lot of TV, so I just I think just, change my interest Destin's somewhere else. Pretty spiteful. <laughs> like, spiteful? What? What? <laughs> it's like I'm gonna get that money. Screw you all. You know, like I, I don't know. I can... He's driven. You're Be driven. Better That's... word, driven. Yes. Driven. Spiteful. Yes, you're spiteful, Destin. <laughs> you're spiteful Thanks. towards that money. My bad. <laughs> Fuck you, money. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll drive through race this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what else, Chad? <laughs> Mark Five Mike asks, "Have you guys considered using a 3D modeling program or mods to make a 3D death battle matchups, which uh, allow characters who don't have sprites to be featured, or would the process take too long, and so on?" Yeah, uh, you know, hold on. Let me answer this question. Uh, actually, Chad, Chad, go ahead, and then I'll, I'll throw my two cents in. Okay, well, um, first of all, we do want to be able to use 3D characters. While we don't want to go through the work of doing 3D modeling or getting a 3D modeler, one thing that we do have plans for the future uh, is for people to make sprites for us. So whether that comes to somebody who's never been in a video game, if they're in a 3D, we want to try and make like a 16-bit or something sprite. So if so, there's so any very talented sprite artists out there, you should send Ben an email. So you're thinking more so like um, demaking them from a three from a three D model to sixteen bit. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, on the actual three D modeling front, uh, I don't look. I I go to meetings all the time and I talk with companies all the time, but we have actually spoken to. A, uh, if you guys remember, there's an awesome company called Modus Digital, and they have this new technology yeah. that's out. And I just had a, a meeting about. Uh, I went to lunch with the, one of the guys there and. Uh, that's one of the things we talked about was the potential of poten doing a live action uh, 3D modeled death battle. So cool. We'll see. You know, I, I like. Don't take that. I forgot about that. Don't take that for like, hey, it's going to happen. It's just something we said maybe. So if it happens, awesome. If it doesn't, don't even remember I said that. So <laughs> whatever. All right. Cool. Uh, but yeah, that was it, the fifth it's, one. It's but, something uh, we talked about. Cool. And, uh, oh, he also asked, how did you react to the outcome of this week's death battle? I, I cried. <laughs> Someone's going to die. Some One great man was going to die. I, I, I thought Boomstick's reaction was genius. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was, yeah. Uh, uh, genius, genius or what you did, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it was very, uh, very sad. All right. Uh, what do we got? Great. Birthdays. Birthdays. Andrew Harrison. Riley, oh my God, Luhenes, Luhenesy, I don't even know. Uh, Luhenes? I don't know, maybe, sure, whatever. Nathan Barnett. Hey, what's up, Nathan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, he's that of, guy. Yeah, go do your, uh, go do your uh, vote on Facebook for his video. Help him get $10,000. Yes, Keith Apicari needs your help. And uh, let's see, so we got Joseph Sotomayor, Billy Floyd, Nathan Scott, Wade Starkey, James Kim, Sponge Dart, Scott the Journalist, and Steer Pike. So happy birthday, G1s. Cool. All right. Very good, guys. I hope everybody enjoyed Side Schoolers this week. And once again, it was a little, uh, little awkward as uh, we're all at our house uh, all bundled up. Just so you guys know, when we were talking about porn earlier, uh, screw attack and porn, I was actually going to say something about having a big old penis, but my wa then my wife walked by, so I had to curse <laughs> out myself. <laughs> but now that yeah, she's back, you felt you had to let everyone you. know. I can say penis as long as, long as I want. She's not here. So like, yeah. That's one of the things about having a cool office is, uh, you know, we, we can go and we can say penis all we want. Yeah, that's why I signed up. <laughs> <All right. laughs> anyway, so there you go. That is Slash Culture this week. And I'm sure it was a memorable one indeed. Uh, all right. So until next week, uh, hey, I'm Stuttering Craig. I'm Daily Destin. And I'm Chad. Penis. <laughs> that is all. <laughs>